Hey, Don Victor here for the Core 80. We're going to take another look at another Picasso painting. Um, <coughs> and uh, this is an interesting one. It's about death. And the series that I've been going through with these Picasso paintings, I just really wanted to show you how Picasso was telling all kinds of different emotional stories. I mean, stories with deep emotion. Sometimes it can trigger well, horrible things, you know, um, and, and sometimes very sensitive, and sometimes it can trigger very beautiful things. Uh, the last video we did with the rape and the love scene, um, two extremely powerful emotions and two ex uh, extremely powerful uh, experiences, and, and he was able to capture them both, the affection of the lovers, in the violence of the rape. And, um, and so today I want you to take a look at an image where he's communicating uh, about death. And remember, when the artist does this, and they go through the designing process to say, okay, this is the energy or this is the function of the piece. This is what I want to communicate. And then they go through the designing process to make that communication occur. Um, that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of depth. And that artist has to spend time with themselves contemplating these ideas, understanding it very intimately. And because then you have to translate it into another language. So you have to translate it out of the language that you speak of and that you're, you're, you're thinking in and, and put it in the language of the visual language, which is design. And, and then to compose that out. And so... The story I want to share with you today is one about death, and um, it's, it's it's actually kind of a neat neat little little story that Picasso does here. So let me go ahead and bring it up for us. And so Picasso did a couple paintings with these characters, and um, and this is the death of one of these characters. And so what I want to show you, excuse me, I want to show you the, uh, the armature, just the rebated square. Oh, sorry, uh, this is episode 32 of the Core 80. So I want to show you the rebated square. Again, the rebated square is just the squares that come in from each uh, side of the, the uh, main rectangle, or we call it the mother rectangle. And when you bring in the rebated square, you begin to see how he broke up the space in this rectangle to tell his story. So once we click here, we'll see that it's broken up into three different areas. We have this light area, which is really like the space that's between the grievers. And then we have the deceased, okay, which is down here. And so the grievers are in their own little space. They're up here. You can see that this guy's face is up here. This guy's face is here. They're, they're, they're gazing in this direction. Strangely enough, he, this fellow almost has a smile on his face. And if he died, I'm not really sure how he got his hands to kind of be that way, unless the rigor mortis set in. <laughs> but uh, that's interesting. So when you look at this breaking up of space, you realize that there's this, all this emptiness in here. And there's a separation between the dead guy and his friends, the grievers. And what's neat is if you look at the curve that's here and you bring it through, you start to feel this, this weight, this ball. And if you just basically copy and paste and stretch it out, you can begin to, these are called compass swings, so you put a point there and you just start running your compass in these intervals. And so as we go from the inner circle to the, I mean, the, the outer circle, or I guess the total inside circle here, the first circle, we go to the second one and we bring it and we swing it, you can start to begin to see how it feels that it's starting to create the bottom of his body. And then it's coming up through his knees, up through the head, the neck of this fella, up through his eyes, and then back down through the nose, the mouth, 
the uh, shadow, the shoulder, and it's just this beautiful circle that keeps moving you. And if we go to the next one, we see that it goes through his forehead, and the side of his hair, his ear, pillow, swings down along these little, these little coincidences, up through the face of this fella, up through the back of the back, the guy back here, up through his head and back. And so we have that. And then if we, if we come back to this point where the pillow starts, comes down to the shadow, comes down through here, actually down into the bottom of the image, back up through, through the shoulder to the back of the guy's head and up and over. <clears throat> and so these are just little, little points, but they connect the eye and allows the eye to flow because you really want to focus on this area, which is the grievers grieving the, the loss of their friend. And so he wants to capture your eye and keep you in that space because that's what most people are doing when they're looking at someone who's deceased. They, they have, they're, they're grieving, they're, they're sad, they're looking at the deceased. And their attention is on the flesh, is on the body of that person. They're looking at the dead body. But added to this, Picasso adds another element, which is just brilliant. If you look at the the flow of this body, it comes up, it, you know, you can, your eye twists back into this space, but if you can break out of that space, you all of a sudden see that his legs go like this and his feet come up. And let me go back to the original here. Okay, so you can see, I can bring my annotation tool here. You can see how this is just going boom, boom. So what happens here is that these guys are mourning the death looking at the body, the gazing direction again is pointing us in this direction. But then there's this design element over here, which is really the soul of the body actually leaving. Isn't that brilliant? So we can be like the grievers who are just grieving over the corpse. But if we follow the design, we realize that the dead guy ain't there no more. He left his body. Out his feet he goes. He's, he's off somewhere else. He's not even there. That's just his body. That's not his soul. That's not him. He's already gone. He's left the building. Elvis has left the building. And, um, and because of that, I just find this piece to be really, really brilliant in, in its composition. Simple, but brilliant. And it communicates a very profound concept. And so on that note, that's the core 80 for today, uh, episode 32. We're going to finish off 100 videos by Christmas. Uh, I am going to let you up, uh, like know up front now um, that uh, I was wanting to do them every single day. Uh, but now that I'm not doing them live, I'm going to be able to pre-record some. And uh, one of the reasons why I, I need to do that is because um, these videos are taking me you know, two, three hours a day to produce and then to market them afterwards is about another two hours. I mean, so it was a really long process and, um, and I was, I'm just having, it's taking too much away from my children and I on the weekends. And so, uh, I need to preserve that time with them. And so I need to readjust. Uh, I'm and for the marathon. I'm going to get, a hundred of these videos done by Christmas. And so uh, come the weekends, I might need to pull back a little. Uh, if I can pre-record some for the weekends, so I'll do that. Um, but I will get you 100 videos by Christmas and it will be on a regular basis, but there might be a day or two here, you know, just cause life happens that I may not be able to uh, uh, fulfill that promise. Uh, so, I just want to put that out there and so that you know that. Um, but this was a brilliant piece. Uh, we have one more Picasso piece for tomorrow, and then we'll move on to uh, another artist after that. And um, lastly, I, I just want to share with, the, with you about the Core 80. The Core 80, um, the way we're uh, presenting it, is it's an 80-day composition retraining. 
I call it a retraining because I want to respect the fact that most of the artists that I deal with are trained, the trained artists. Um, but in their training, they lack proper composition training. And for, for whatever reasons that, that, that is, over the last 60 some years, most artists just have not been properly trained to compose and design art. You know, they've been taught that it's whatever you feel and that it's, you know, intuitive and, um, you know, you don't need these rules. Um, and they're not rules or principles, but, you know, we kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater. And, um, and now artists are feeling like, hey, I've been putting 20, 30, 40 years into my work and it just isn't to the quality that I want. There's something not right about it and I can't put my finger on it. And some people know it's composition. They know it's designing their piece, that they lack that skill. Even though they might be great painters or even great storytellers or they might be making incredible livings of uh, um, selling artwork, but they know as an artist that they're not to the level. There's something off. And when they take the time to go investigate it, they almost always come back to the reality that they were never trained in um, composition or design. And so that's why we're, we're wanting to retrain you in composition. We don't want to teach you how to paint. We don't want to teach you how to draw. We don't want to teach you how to sculpt or do architecture or any of those things. Um, there are a lot of courses out there on that. And there's a lot of places you can go to learn about those things. But what we want to focus on is, is making sure that you can tell a great story and that you can design it and communicate it clearly uh, through composition. All right. So if you want more information, go to core80.com. You can Facebook me. Um, or give me a call and we can have a uh, conversation about, you know, your work and, and how you feel composition is going to help you. And I'm here to help. So, ciao.